Okay, this video I am going to just start with the man that you see right there who was heavily involved in MKUltra. There are actually two around the people today I'm going to present so that you understand the nature of my case. ...and of Brazilian cities themselves. In this episode, we're looking at how these gangs operate, using extreme violence to seize power and defend their territory. I'm J.S. Raffaelli. I've spent years writing about drugs, why people use them, and why our governments chose to declare war on them. At Vice, we make a lot of films about drugs, but in this show, I get to dig a bit deeper. I get to talk to fellow expert drug nerds about their research to the crazy world of mind-altering substances. Nico Vorobiev has covered the global drug trade from Colombia to Japan. Today, he's talking about his experiences with the dealers and hitmen of Brazil's deadliest drug gangs. Nico, welcome to News on Drugs. Uh, both of these guys were involved in MK Ultra uh, with Nico Vorobiev became involved in MK Ultra uh, literally through Vladimir Putin. Vladimir Putin uh, Nikol Vorobiev is born in greater than Great Britain, or I should say United Kingdom, where Prince, now King Charles, is the king. And the time when Nikol Vorobiev, whose parents are Russian, I met both parents, I met him before he headed into a prison, and this is going into a period probably of, I don't know, like 2002, something like this. Um, Vladimir Putin demanded him to be involved in drugs. No, actually, sorry, 1999, 1999, 1998, Nico Vorobiev and his family were involved. Uh, Mr. Raffaelli is an FBI agent. He uh, poses as a journalist, but closely works with the FBI. So uh, I'm going to give a little bit entry here in what exactly global governments have used me for uh, in, if you like, uh, sting operation in respect to the sting operations uh, in in, in, in a so-called war on drugs. Uh, if I go back just a little bit here, and I want you to see my face. I had a Roma family here behind the village. Let me demonstrate you. So, that we understand each other, that we have a complete overview uh, about what Slovenian government cooked here. Yeah, so this is a city of the novel master. You can see this is this is our house right there. And now I'm going to zoom out because I yeah, if I get the directions, that would be probably good. Yeah, I do get directions. Look at that. No, no, no. We're going to go by walking like this. And uh, that makes a whole different experience. It makes about 2.4 kilometer. Uh, it says right there, 34 minutes. I, I don't think it takes 34 minutes. It's, it's, it's very, very close. It's a village that is right next to our village here. If you look at the map of the city of the Novo Mesto, then you can see that I am pretty much a neighbor of this Roma family here. Yeah? Okay, <clears throat> okay, 
Now, and I did report it the other day about what took place here in front of this home here, how the car, as I was heading in uh, this direction here, basically back to my home, uh, a cut right here in front of me like this, and then stopped. Yeah. Uh, and then slowly, very, very, very slowly uh, proceeded, uh, just as the Roma guy told me he would do. He would just proceed with uh, uh, such a speed that a camera would not even catch him. Um, his tires basically melt sand underneath, yeah. Well, so for me to tell you this here, this is a home from a nurse, a Yanko, apparently this house here that you see here. Uh, and so there is a Roma man uh, who moved here long, long, long time ago before I was far born. Uh, this is a very old man, a Roma guy who married one of the locals here and lived, according to my knowledge, this man lived in a complete harmony. I don't recall anybody ever saying anything against the old uh, Roma man here. Yeah, He's got uh, a family not too far from here, but uh, just about the same distance, maybe two kilometers from here at the Smolenia Gora, right at the top of the Smolenia Vas, Smolenia Gora, uh, which I also demonstrated. I think oh, maybe I go back here a little bit to uh, give it like a little refreshment. This is why uh, is is not is not not very bright for Slovenian police uh, to do what they did. You know, that's a really really stupid stuff. It's the stuff I'm going to talk about. Uh, it concerns uh, it concerns more than anybody. It concerns the Slovenian police, and that is already what I stated. I will go after with everything I have, including my life. Uh, this is the incident, description of the incident took place with the audio recording, I get some death threats, that kind of stuff. Uh, well, this is the same car or not? You know, I think it was Audi or something like that. Okay, you can see the title here, and what I do is when somebody presents me uh, a stuff like this, or somebody presents me with a stuff like this, this is when the watch, the time stops, and what happens is I come to the bottom of this. Uh, it's because it's very important for me. And a second of all, you don't ever want to cross somebody's path who was a subject, a victim of MK Ultra torture, because doing something like this is the stupidest thing you possibly can do. You can do a lot of things in life, but when you're going to cross somebody who was a victim of MK Ultra, and you're going to try to impose on him some kind of your own order or something like this. Uh, this is what things are going to go from the worst to the worst possible for you, to the bitter end. Uh, think about, uh, I was not afraid of Slovenian state. Think about what I did to Slovenian state. Think about what I am going to do to Slovenian state. So think about if you're bigger, if you live in Slovenia than Slovenian state. Think about these issues. Think about someone who was thrown inside a psychiatric hospital. Think about me when you were watching me when I was hospitalized and they get me out of the psychiatric hospital to you and you watch me all over the world, whether that be Brazil, Italy, Slovenia, Russia, or whatever. Think about what you have seen. 
slow down and think about what you have seen. Mm, I am worse than Slovenian state. I am a nightmare of the Slovenian state. It could well happen I will terminate Slovenian state. Yeah, this is war. It's not a war on drugs. It's war on something else. It's war on genocide. When you pick the wrong person and you want to use one to demonstrate world about just how far you can go in a genocide against somebody, think about my words right now. These are the words that Prince Charles from Britain knows all too well. If I go back to these two individuals, this guy here that you see here, Nico uh, Vorobiev, brought me, uh, he's talking about his about Today, Brazil. and now that's it. You know, don't, don't, don't take this stuff here that you see, you're going to see these people with the guns, with machine guns, with, you know, all kinds of stuff. And, and uh, uh, it, it's pretty scary. It's a pretty scary stuff, you know. Uh, during MK Ultra, it is true, you know, that I was not aware about. I was, I was nothing aware about, basically about uh, well, I was aware. I was aware about where I was and what went on and this and that, you know. Um, it's a wrong choice of words. Uh, I uh, in this war on Slovenian state, on Slovenian nation, to be honest with you, I have forgotten about what danger is. That's how dangerous I became. And so when I was in surroundings of the people like you see right there, uh, with guns pointing my forehead, uh, they couldn't believe that there is somebody like me in this world because I was completely out of this world. They couldn't intimidate me. Uh, and, well, eventually they did intimidate me by explaining me the situation. I figured out I'm never going to be capable to destroy Slovenian state to get back to Slovenian nation for what Slovenian nation did to me uh, if I get killed by these people. And that was the only thing, the only thing that stopped me from maybe even assaulting these guys. This is the brutal reality about the case. If you don't know what MK Ultra is, think about my words and uh, stay safe. Niko Vorobiev, this individual here that you see, as I told you, a Russian guy, brought me into some kind of uh, fiesta, some kind of... Uh, they had like some kind of, uh, so the local gang members, the drug dealers, they had some kind of uh, important meeting and such a stuff. And uh, uh, he was uh, hyping with issues about uh, how I have to behave, how I have to take seriously mafia, uh, how dangerous it is, how they can kill me. This is a, I don't know, a YouTube star or whatever it is. Uh, there was many like this. They all work uh, for uh, law enforcement agencies, basically. Uh, and uh, it was indifferent with Niko Vorobiev. He, he built, he, he got in some kind of, uh, maybe he sensed uh, that. Uh, circumstances which uh, surrounded him and uh, he sensed uh, that, you know. And this this was basically for me like uh, something normal under MK Ultra. Under MK Ultra, you had knife under your throat basically 24-7. There is nothing certain when you had knife under the throat on how things are gonna end, you know, at just about any time. So that's the kind of person you're talking about here. Uh, so the Nico, you know what? I am 52 almost now in December I'm gonna be. And uh, for 51 years, 
51 years. At least 25% of those 51 years, I was drugged up like this. You know, I just want you to understand me, uh, even if you did MK Ultra on somebody or something, you got to understand my circumstances. You got to understand my background. Uh, Niko Vorobiev orchestrated to me, I think he orchestrated, I think it was not a real death threat, but it was the situation that required uh, assistance. Uh, what uh, Niko Vorobiev claimed was Italian Andrangheta. Drangheta. Uh, Andrangheta. Okay, excuse me. Andrangheta. Yeah. Uh, Italian Andrangheta uh, was the one that apparently, and Niko goes on to break down how Italians do, you know, the stuff uh, with Brazil, with the Colombia, with, with all these countries in South America, how they import the drugs to the Europe. And Nico went on to, he talks about this uh, mafia people here, bosses and so on, how he met them and so on. Uh, uh, he goes on to basically point at a Buckingham Palace, uh, but basically implying on how uh, it was Italian and Drangheta, uh, I don't know whom they have used. Have they used the real members of Italian Andrangheta? I don't know. It was the people from Italy who later on claimed me uh, that they were not even going to make that emergency call uh, for the sake of the British, for the sake of the British royals, for the sake of the Prince Charles and Prince Andrew, who insisted that uh, anything that would happen to me uh, through Italian Andrangheta, basically. That's how it went. They got the phone call, the mafia got a phone call. Uh, he mentioned them Italian Andrangheta, apparently. Yeah. Uh, but like I said, this guy is a Russian. Uh, this is an uh, associate of Vladimir Putin. It's not... Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, born British in Britain, but it's a Russian. And that's a very important fact. Uh, he got, he resented me because I didn't want to have anything to do with him because he's a Russian, yeah? Uh, he didn't like me because uh, he was a Russian, um, because, uh, because I labeled him as a Russian. Oh, so uh, he couldn't impress me, no matter he would do what. Uh, he's a good-looking fellow and everything, but uh, the fact that he was a Russian, the fact that he was involved in drugs already in Britain and so on uh, is just something. Well, when it comes to Russian, I really didn't want to have absolutely anything to do with it. That's basically when you cut the line, it was pretty much end of the world. And that's what he deemed was a discrimination, a racism against one. Uh, and so on one occasion, they decided, apparently, according to Nico Vorobiev, uh, who also does here at the beginning of this documentary, uh, he, he salutes in a Thai, in a Thailand way. He knows absolutely everything about my case. I think my case is all over the dark web. So pretty much everybody has access to this case some way, somehow. This is, this is a huge network of people, at least a million people, that do have access to this file. Um, He decided uh, that it would be just the best for me to uh, get killed, apparently. Uh, he took initiative in what he, in his own, uh, ah, there you go, that's like a Thai way, Thai salute. Uh, in his own description, in his own uh, under MK Ultra to give me an impression, uh, he would arrange death with me throughout MK Ultra uh, because I was so racist, prejudiced to him, disliked him, uh, and 
well, there you have it, uh, the bosses were going to kill me, but it was Italian and Drangheta, apparently. I had no fucking clue. Who was it? Was it really Italian and Drangheta? Uh, but according to him, it was Italian and Drangheta on behalf of British royals that made the call to save me uh, in the last minute to spare my life by actually even insisting uh, to mafia. Uh, actually, mafia insisted, Italian mafia insisted them to not touch and this and that. Uh, with what I learned about later on, I learned about that British royals, if it's to believe this stuff, apparently the British royals that threatened him afterwards, explaining to him that if anything happens to him, the least what will happen is that he's dead. This is like the minimum thing. It's actually worse than that. He was told in for the cities, he is talking about here on the map that uh, excuse me, that are off the map. The cities where I was brought already since, since 1994, probably 1993, I was brought here to these locations here that don't exist on the map in Brazil. And Rio de Janeiro is this areas here. Uh, parts of the town, they're not even on the map. Uh, like well hidden, uh, what they refer to as a slums. Yeah, I don't see this as a slums. So I don't see this like this and like that and, and this and that. I, I just see a lot of people that would love to have different way organized life, but you know, it's just very difficult for them. Uh, still, what I want to say here is, uh, even with Brazilian government uh, threatening the mafia bosses throughout Brazil, would assistance of the British would have parts of the towns or entire towns made flat, like flat without a single house spirit, if something like this were to take place. Yeah, so this is what I was used for. Uh, Niko Vorobiev, I don't know how wealthy he got. Uh, he did have me in this flat here. Uh, this is very difficult to 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 establish. Uh, I should, according to MK Ultra, know um, he did have me in this flat here. However, he had uh, several flats, uh, and this is one of the flats that he contemplated on having way before he moved in one. Yeah, way before he moved in one. Uh, he already checked the flat and so on, how it is, what is the surrounding, what is with the government, local government, and so on. So what we see here with these guys here, according to what I can tell, is that we see a Google uh, a YouTube stars that make money and uh, did fill the pockets with... Uh, Briberies of the local gangs, uh, where the situation is like a total, total poverty. Very, very difficult situation for people to get by. So they could post uh, videos online, uh, advertise their adventures. Like, let's say this guy here. No, not this guy. This guy here. I didn't go to that guy yet. I just saw briefly right now on this guy. He's not risking. This guy was involved in, in, in adventures to Brazil. Oh, my God. Uh, probably, like, I estimate... Yeah, I, 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 uh, I would say about like 2006, you know, 2006 is what I am going to go, yeah? And the video which he posted two months ago, you know, 
uh, is actually even a question if uh, the people here are still alive. Uh, let me see, he's talking to one black guy. Everybody that you see uh, on these videos was involved in MKUltra, including the people here that you see, everything that you see here, all this stuff that you see here, uh, all this, all this, not this, but I don't know what that was, anyways, from some movie excerpt or whatever. Uh, but where they go and they show the clips, uh, the clips that they show are collections of work. Well, well, let me see when this video was published. A year ago, a year ago, this video was published a year ago. Uh, they collect the clips for 15 years before they eventually, in more, before eventually they have them released. You understand what I say? Uh, he said that there is no, um, uh, you know, in the video, he says that there is no uh, maps, that there is no, these this towns are not on the maps and so on. These towns already were on the maps. All the gang syndicates that he is talking about, the drug syndicates were involved. Um, all the, all the, all, all types of the gangs he's talking about in this video, everybody with Bolsonaro, with his family, with, with, uh, uh, with uh, with what is his name, uh, the new Brazilian president, everybody, Bra Brazilian president uh, Lula was, uh, where is the Lula? He was involved uh, in MKUltra already probably since uh, 1993. Yeah, this guy was involved since 1993. Uh, he was a big, big friend, a big, big, big colleague of Milan Kucha. This is a socialist, supposedly, and uh, it was Vladimir Putin and Milan Kucha who made a tremendous, tremendous impression with this guy, uh, with uh, Mr. Lula. I got to know his entire family beginning in 1993. So do you understand now the magnitude of my whereabouts in Brazil, my MKUltra whereabouts in Brazil. What well, this is, what this is, yeah? So don't doubt about my visiting these locations here. Eventually, excuse me, uh, using me, these people here, basically, people like this using me to get into these slums, uh, into these areas where uh, it's close to deadly, you know, over there, really, if you, if you, if you look, it's a normal environment that if you look somebody in an appropriate way, you can get quickly eliminated, you know, this way to go through there is, but basically constantly pay locals for, ah, uh, you want to say the whatever, basically for your business. Oh, so these people, what the fuck they do, these people? These people, if you look at this guy here, he had nine, how many? Nine, almost nine million views. You think uh, that there are no revenues from the videos like this? Uh, this guy, this is a gangster, basically. This is a gangster that took opportunity to penetrate into issues which otherwise uh, are accessible to the people willing to take a risk uh, at Brazilian government is discrepancy. If a Brazilian government doesn't feel like, you know, uh, your pain may be enough or something like this, uh, you know, they just let you, uh, you know, the gangs to take care of you, basically. Now, if, you're, if, if they deem that you're beneficial and they have agreement, a state agreement, then you will be assisted with somebody like me, whom you will use to penetrate into these towns and so on, and you will video record, and you will uh, emphasize, uh, how can I say, you will you know, have some exclusive video with exclusive rights. I... Uh, a lot of stuff that you see here in these clips is 
Nico did, uh, how can I, sensationalize, sen sensation, sensational, sensationalize, so he could get, which is a logical thing, everybody did. Everybody did, including this guy here. Uh, whether uh, the black guy holding the AK-47 is still alive, I don't know. Uh, he was listed already as good to go, he's a bad man, he's a boss in some part of the town, mafia. Uh, the thing is, uh, in the Rio de Janeiro, the thing is that uh, he was a subject to Brazilian government officials, police. If they say that you're gone of the picture, you're just gone of the picture. So now we had a perfect understanding of, of this guy here. This guy was really, really, uh, this oh, guy yeah. was really, uh, how can I say? Uh, what can I say? 320,000 views he had. He made a decent amount of money and he carried on his political message, terror. Okay. Oh. I don't know how I would uh, rate this guy. Uh, this is a promoter a of, uh, of right? These guys armed violence, basically. This is a promoter of drugs. This is a promoter. But the funny thing is that these adventurists made a tremendous, tremendous uh, commercial for. Uh, it, it, it grew into total into business. Basically, when I started with this stuff, when they started to use me, it was 1990. Uh, oh, that's a very long time ago. That's like 33 almost years ago. 33 years ago, maybe even more. Uh, probably more. 86. Yeah. That's about 30. This goes back to about... Uh, 37 years back in time when they started to use me as a stink. I was in a high school when they started to use me as a stink in, in, in what, maybe a first, uh, what, 14 years old, 15 years old when they started to use me for what you see here to penetrate into areas uh, in the so-called uh, war on the mafia. And it all started in Sicily, in uh, Calabria, uh, yeah, also in other parts of the world, such as South America, but that was like accent with the British royals all over the place. Uh, you couldn't make a difference between uh, British royals uh, and the local mafia bosses and the police. I did not know on uh, basically... Uh, the difference between uh, between the police and between the bosses, between the mafia, because uh, British royals deal with both sides. They were on one side and on the other. You could not discern. You could not make any difference. I couldn't see. I couldn't spot the difference between. I couldn't make my mind on which side these people were. Whether they were on the side of the mafia or the police, I concluded. Uh, it was all the same shit. They all worked together. What I stated right now is going to be a deep resentment from Italian states, but Italian state did not declare itself in absolutely any way that would be to me beneficial. The Italian state post with the Slovenian state At the copper, they would have officials coming from Trieste, uh, like uh, they would uh, deliver me and so on and so forth, and it would be Slovenian. This is how it all started. It was Slovenian police that would be meeting me, and it would, once I would be transferred back to Italy again, to Trieste, I would be meeting the mayor, uh, police, uh, that would 
claim me through what appeared was a mafia that delivered me to the copper, uh, how they had managed to identify a police officers uh, in a, uh, from copper already, that they already recognized them and so on. You know, this shit was so convincing that uh, I would even believe one uh, if it was not for Slovenian-Italian police cooperation with one another. Slovenian and Italian police collaborated with one another, including with a drug transport from uh, uh, Italy through Slovenia to Europe, to the rest of the Europe, not only to Slovenia, and um, to the, such a great degree that the two would not even get into uh, any kind of fraction when Vladimir Putin started to distribute uh, his drugs through Slovenia to uh, Italy. That was uh, incredible. Uh, let me not forget to tell you that Italian government told me to tell you that uh, the drugs from Vladimir Putin, however, were not uh, natural substances, were the substances that would cause uh, people permanent brain damage. They would, he used the drugs, Putin used the drugs that would uh, leave people impaired permanently. Uh, which is also something that you're going to read about here on uh, one of the posts which pertains to uh, to what you see here. Yeah, so this is continuation about the local Roma family. Because I don't like uh, stuff like this to enter my life. I didn't have anything from this uh, operations. This guy got wealthy. Uh, this guy is posing like a small apartment and so on. But uh, the truth is questionable with Mr. Raffaelli, including uh, these people were extremely, extremely, they had extremely lucrative, productive life compared to me. I didn't live in a poverty. I didn't live yet. You understand me what I said? I did not leave yet. I didn't have life yet. Yeah, I didn't have any life yet. I don't understand if you understand what I stated. But if you're going to cross my road in absolutely any way, you're going to regret crossing it. I think you understand my background. I think you understand my circumstances. The drugs since exploded. The global export, the global business that went on, uh, it absolutely went into a heaven for the drug dealers. Uh, thanks to the guys like this one here that you see. Do you see the stadium here? Everybody involved. Everybody in the city involved. Everybody knows me in the city. Everybody knows me in the city. How did I get here to this place? This guy did not have any idea about this place here. This is a younger guy than myself, much younger. It was a Slovenian police that delivered me to Brazil. It was Milan Kuchan, it was this guy here that you see, this, this guy, this is the guy who delivered me to the Rio, to the Rio de Janeiro and to other parts of Brazil. If it's going to be internet, I will be able to show you eventually. Oh, hey. see this guy here? This is the guy who had police investigators and the police station Novo Mesto with the state prosecutors deliver me to those parts of the countries in those parts of the world. This is, has his own agenda on his mind. His own agenda on his mind was to use me to assemble Yugoslavia back under the drug threat, which, which he used to label the Italy with. He had the program 
uh, in his program, one of the main threats that would help Slovenian nation uh, basically lobotomized Slovenian nation, some crazy nation, experiment nation here in the middle of the Europe that decided it's going to be independent from the greater Serbian Chetnik state, known previously as Yugoslavia. He came up to realize that as long as the nation is going to be lobotomized, uh, as long as he can keep the nation stupid, stupidified, uh, with assistance of the West, uh, using uh, me as an experimental subject for human experiments, butcheries such as, uh, let's say, German Gestapo or SS did inside of the concentration camps, or Joseph Stalin did in his concentration camps throughout the Soviet Union, Russia, uh, that uh, as long as he had these people from the West on board doing this kind of stuff, uh, that he will keep immune uh, and even protected from the local population in Slovenia from being persecuted with others, uh, mostly members of the Forum 21. None of them at Forum 21, so-called Forum 21, none of these gangsters at Slovenian Forum 21 did not participate uh, in crime, would not, they would not participate uh, in crime against me. Maybe second to Sava company in Slovenia in amount, degree of crime was a compass director. That's a individual who just died He just died. He just died, uh, I don't know, the day before yesterday. Or this gangster, this Milan Kuchan. And I call every one of them a Milan Kuchan because it makes things so much more simple. Oh, his name, Janus Perger. This gangster tortured mercilessly since 1990. Compass. Oh, he needed money. He needed connections. This was like an Al Capone of Milan Kuchan. It's like a main ticket of Milan Kuchan because this gangster here was used. And he's alive. He got a death certificate issue. He's hiding somewhere like a bunch of other people. Uh, he was used due to a tourist agency with this gangster ran uh, to expand a Milan Kuchan to other parts of the world and to, to make connections since 1988 Milan Kuchan gangster ran Slovenia in exactly fashion I am so talking to you about right now uh, he was using a tourist main tourist company called Compass you know to make also connections with companies from outside of Slovenia, and also uh, with the drug dealers, with all kinds of mafia, gangsters, and so on. So you have, uh, through this company, Compass, is it still even exist? Yeah, it does. It, it appears it exists. This is a Yugoslav company, you know, Compass. In Yugoslavia was a Compass. How do you travel with it? Through the Compass. We love compass, we go through the compass. Vacation here, vacation there with a the compass, yeah? Uh, and uh, uh, Slovenian police, Novo Mesto investigators, directors, they would deliver me to Brazil, to Colombia, to Italy, to Calabria, and so on, to all the locations, wherever the mafia was. And yeah, they were making connection with this Gambino here, Slovenian here, Milan Kuchan. This is a big crime boss. This is the biggest crime boss in Slovenia is a Milan Kuchan. This is the father of organized crime in Slovenia, this guy here, this. This guy became very ambitious. Uh, he collected uh, good contracts. Uh, you know, in Slovenia, 
people would want to have uh, salaries, uh, German salaries, but at the same time, they would love to live in the Soviet Union. That's the only problem we have here. Yeah? People want here a German salaries, a German standards, uh, top of the line cars, top of the line housing, top of the line technology, top of the line markets, but they want here a Soviet Union, USSR. Also in this part of the Balkans known as a greater Serbian Chetnik state, Yugoslavia, Yugoslavia, they want Yugoslavia and they want the German salaries. That's the only problem we have here. Yeah? So this gangster here was the one who delivered me and continued to deliver me to Brazil, to Colombia, and also through the board of Pahor, made an arrangement uh, with the mayor of Trieste, uh, with the police, uh, to uh, when they would deliver me back to Trieste, uh, you know, collect uh, video clips for them, like, yeah, we already detected the police officers, Slovenian police officers, uh, that they met them, we already know every, for everybody where they are, who they are, and this and that. You know, all this shit, all this shit is this shit here that you see, that garbage right there, that is the one that caused this stuff. With a total assistance, unfortunately, I have to say, of London, of the greater than greater British royals, Prince Charles, now King Charles, Prince Andrew, what became Prince William, Prince Harry. A Russian uh, born in Britain uh, wanted me wanted to make a meeting uh, with me, with that, to get me killed, to get Brazilian gangs kill me, but it was Italian and Drangheta uh, that saved me, uh, who later, even I understand, uh, regretted, or whoever the fuck regretted this, did so on behalf of the British royals, uh, as I was taught, you know, and with the, uh, with the, uh, with something placed over your eyes, such as a drugs in injected in your veins, uh, it's a bit hard to tell other than what I stated. This guy is a Russian, a good acquaintance of Vladimir Putin too. So this was his view, his side of the story. That's how basically he wanted me to. And I think this is how Milan Kuchan was writing his own story with police, with novel master police, with novel master police investigators. They were just writing their fable, their story, and that's how they wanted me to see one else. And they label you as a paranoid schizophrenic, as a mentally ill, and you have no right to fucking say that. Basically, they take like a, uh, like a special dice, and they make the reservation that you are, you can be taken into asylum, hijacked basically at any time at their convenience, and anything can be done with you at just about any time. Yeah. This is Slovenia, that's why I said that my heart will not stop till I, till Slovenian nation comes clear about what Slovenian nation is about. I want to define Slovenian nation. I want to know what Slovenian nation is. And I want to destroy Slovenian nation. Because Slovenian nation, what Slovenian nation did to me. Hitler did not have the reason to hate Slovenian people, but trust me, I do. Hitler didn't have any kind of reason to hate Slovenian nation. But Slovenian nation is a mistake, it's an error, it's a, it's, it's, it, it's a Slovenia, Slovenian nation. You cross that fucking Slovenian nation, it's called the genocide, it's called murder, it's called barbarism. It's called psychiatry. It's called violence. It's called drugged up 52 years. Do you understand my definition? I'm not this guy here. I'm not this guy here. I'm not this guy here, this guy that is posing with this AK-47. You don't want to fucking meet me. In real time, you don't want to fucking meet me with the stuff like this. You don't want to meet me in your nightmares. When it comes to the enemies, if you're my enemy, I don't fucking choose. I take it.
from this location here, this is the house that uh, Yanko sold. This is the house where the half brother of uh, the son of original Roma old man was uh, born. And this half brother, uh, what I know about this half brother is that he deeply cared about his family at Jabiak, uh, which was really, really commendable. He brought one brother. This brother supposedly even got into the relationship with what was the sister of the nurse Yanko, who is in the home for elderly people who sold this to them. Yeah. And then he brought another brother, whom I have seen uh, repair the other day, uh, the roof here of the house. Uh, I, I, I went past through here. Uh, and I saw him, uh, uh, let me not make a mistake, at top of this house right there, he was fixing the stuff. He's got two sons. Uh, he was doing his stuff. Uh, and for me personally, the original brother that was from here, that he cared about his impoverished family at Zabiak, was really, really impressive. Uh, the things uh, turn, however, weird with uh, this uh, original brother from uh, this place. Uh, the original brother, uh, therefore half half brother, a Roma guy, half brother of the two other brothers who came from Zabiak. Uh, he was trying to get himself a job. Uh, he was trying to date locally. Uh, he uh, dated locally. He, he dated locally from what I remember back in time. Uh, all of a sudden, when I was hijacked from the United States of America, there is another village here, just a little bit from here, a little further. Uh, he got himself a chick here, Slovenia, uh, and I was even heard that uh, he make a child with uh, some girl from this village here. Uh, uh, let's see what is the name of this village here. It's called uh, Dolenia Vaz, yeah? Uh, the name of this place here, it's called Dolenia Vaz. Uh, the, year, the year was like, maybe like even 2003 or something like this. Uh, he dated a girl, a Slovenian girl. And then I really have no clue exactly what happened other than uh, the whole thing have fallen apart. And of course, I was blamed for it, just like for everything else. Uh, he had a difficulty uh, finding uh, employment uh, because of me, of course. Uh, yeah, this is psychiatrist Peter Kopp who ran this crime, the father of this crime, psych psychiatrist. Psychiatrist, local psychiatrist Peter Kopp. This is the guy here. Okay. Yeah. This is the man here that you see here. This guy, this here. No, well, you can have, you already know the address, everything from this guy. Yeah. This is the guy right here. Let me demonstrate here. This, this individual here. This guy here. Yesterday I submitted the review on a Google review, but the Google did not post anything about my rating this individual as uh, Karadzic. I see that nobody posted anything. I submitted the review and have rated one through the Google. Uh, according to the, psych to the Serbian psychiatrist, mass murder on the Balkans 
uh, known as a Karadzic. The boats, uh, both of them, both are the same, made of the same toes, the same shit, the same criminals, uh, working for exactly identical agenda. Uh, in case you're not familiar with the Karadzic, this is a war criminal that was sentenced to spend a life in a jail due to crimes against humanity committed throughout Bosnia and Herzegovina, actually on parts of what previously used to be known as a Yugoslavia, Radovan, this guy who was also involved in it. This is yet another butcher, Balkan butcher that was involved, also a psychiatrist. But this is the same shit. This is the man who was designing this Roma crime against me, uh, which really reached unbearable heights because for everything that happened to this Roma family, I was guilty. I was labeled with absolutely everything. Uh, everything I did, you know, everything I would do, uh, say, drugged up, hijacked from Miami, uh, this man envisioned in their heads as my being pure evil, damaging them on every step of the way, uh, using a police investigators uh, to uh, incite this Roma family against me, which came uh, literally into situations where in which uh, arms were even used, uh, numerous death threats I received because of psychiatrists, Peter Kopsch and Novomesto police, uh, about my even daring, without even knowing these people, ever meeting them in real time, uh, to ever cross uh, to what they started to claim was their territory. This, this is, this is basically where I'm not supposed to walk. That this is just uh, uh, if you're going to be walking here, you will, you we will kill you. You will only go once, twice here. Uh, through here and you will be dead. Uh, it all ended up with an uh, individual that was working on the roof the other day and has uh, two sons. This is a third brother, I think he's the youngest one, and it's also the only one who is employed at TPV, uh, claiming me that I still owe them 5,000 euros uh, in like, I think the year was like 2018 or 2019, uh, but like I have stated, this Roma family, whenever they particip participated in MK Ultra in Slovenia, always had uh, three meters away from them a police officers from the Novo Mesto police stations, Novo Mesto police station, police investigators and police officers from a Novo Mesto police station. Yeah. Uh, that I still owe them money. Basically, my life was erased, destroyed. I probably received about 100, at least 100 death threats from this local Roma family. And uh, that I still owe them a money. That's still going to be 5,000 euros that I owe them, that I will have to pay them and so on. Uh, this youngest brother... Uh, claimed that I destroyed the two of his brothers. Oh, he really wanted to be, I think, alone on this place here. He wanted this place to himself. Uh, the two brothers, Slovenian state, have designed would immigrate to another part of Slovenia. Yeah. Uh, they have a family here in Valenia. Yeah. This uh, Roma people have a family also here in Valenia. Uh, another Roma, uh, like a little settlement it was, but they really took care of that very well. Uh, for every, uh, every location that this Roma family involved. Uh, however, I was beaten up. 
uh, for every circumstance that was used to, uh, to improve the lives of the Roma families, and you can go and you can multiply this 2,000 times, and then you will get the degree of the racism, discrimination of Slovenian nation against me just by using the Roma people, what they refer to also as a Roma problematic. Yes, for every Roma family in Slovenia that Slovenia paid money to have lives of these people improved, uh, Slovenian state, Milan Kuchan, subjected me to the torture. She demanded from such families to engage in torture against me. And if the torture was successfully done, uh, then they would provide for them basic necessities such as the vodovod, electricity, water, basically electricity and such stuff, and maybe even some bricks, maybe jobs, something like this, so they could uh, build themselves at least semi-decent households, uh, and which would be supported by the jobs or whatever and so on. But Milan Kuchan has a different plan, and he presented a uh, to me, at least, the uh, entire Roma community in Slovenia is uh, Drangheta, as in Drangheta, as an Italian extension that uh, spread from Palermo uh, all the way to Ljubljana. This is basically, according to him, we're going to take a Maribor, uh, or rather maybe more, more, uh, Murska Sobota, yeah, we're going to take a Palermo to Murska Sobota, so that, no, 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 we're going to go with the car like this. Yeah, that's the way I like that. Uh, with, the, with the Slovenian police, no, 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 with the Slovenian police, I always traveled along the coastline, because Slovenian police love to bat themselves along the Adriatic coast on the Italian side, they go swimming, going to, uh, uh, to the local, local supermarkets, buying themselves fruit, which is not uh, fresh, which is not available in Slovenia or for discounted price, you know, and that kind of stuff. Maybe also take uh, some extra luggage with them also uh, and earn money with that one too. Yeah, this is basically how Milan Kuchan have envisioned the reunion of Yugoslavia, of Yugoslavia uh, through the Slovenian nation. You know, this is basically this will be like a drug threat. It's a drug. It's a drug. And actually, in Slovenia, and Drangheta is a Slovenian police without a uniforms. They have no fucking connection with Italian uh, mafia or whatever, other than what I stated. Once he goes through the, uh, right here, through this state line, uh, it's just for the benefit of their interests. Uh, Italy doesn't owe them anything. Uh, nothing was... When it comes to Slovenian police, that would be uh, for free or something like this. They had to pay. If they did whatever they did, they coordinated the stuff. They did the stuff. Oh, it's all coordinated. It's nothing that would not be uh, like the Italian state would do something like through the black market or something against Slovenia without uh, prior agreement with the Milan Kuchan with the board power. I have to say to Italian government, yeah, you did assist it. You did assist it, Milan Kuchan, and you did assist it, Borut Pachor, uh, and you did assist it, all these pro-Soviets, pro-Yugoslav politicians in Rome, uh, in Milano, ongoingly, you delivered me over there like a cattle, like an animal, and you did assist them in crime against me by even pointing me being liable for the genocide in Bosnia and Srebrenica. You will have to respond. I'm talking to Italy right now. You will have to respond for these crimes against humanity. I will charge you with a crime against humanity, even with the ethnic discrimination and with the racism 
because of your taking side with Slovenian side. I did not like that. I don't appreciate that. And when it comes to the threats like this under my window that uh, involve through Slovenian police, a local Roma community for which you knew very well, Italians knew about the local community in Zabiak, you knew about all these things, uh, you will have to respond to me to some questions about this stuff. Um, this individual For everything I was guilty, um, Slovenia, however, already find them a home. These people already established themselves, families here, uh, homes, houses uh, in a Murska Sobota area where the Roma settlement is located as well. So I don't have anything else I would uh, add. They have uh, part of the family here at Valenia and another part of the family here in Murska Sobota. And I'm right here from the Novo Mesto. They took me everywhere. And with assistance, uh, or I should say at the demand of the uh, Slovenian police uh, from Murska Sobota, where they would keep me enormously a lot, uh, they would also transport me to the area of the Maribor. Uh, based on my memory, this is behind uh, the Maribor that there is a, a road, something like this, uh, where there were trees, just like, uh, almost like identical landscape to, uh, to the one we have behind the village, uh, where is a newly asphalted road, which Slovenian police, a psychiatrist, Peter Kapp, uh, was uh, using to uh, at large to torture me in this part of the Maribor. He would torture and torture and torture and intimidate and death threaten. It's also where he would use exactly this Roma community, as well as the people from my Kirka village, local neighbors, village people, to death threaten me, to intimidate, to harass on more than 1,000 occasions, if that explains anything. And this is the new asphalt road they paved behind the village. Yeah, so I just uh, I just want to for you to understand my circumstances. Uh, as for the Roma community here in Slovenia, uh, for every household, whether it was for the electricity or for the job or for whatever it was, for instance, the two brothers no longer would look for the job uh, because it was a Slovenian police, uh, a local government that uh, started to harass them, torment them through the job search. Uh, the, the brother uh, who is originally from here, half brother, half Roma brother, uh, started to look for the job with his brother. Uh, and it was the Slovenian government that would play with their jobs. It was again this individual here who ran the operations. His name is Peter Kapsch, the psychiatrist, uh, who wanted to brain fuck them and see how much she can brain fuck with them. Uh, according to his own words, would do the same thing that he was doing to me to see basically how far this Roma family would. Uh, attempt to look for the job, yeah? According to his words, according to the words of the state prosecutor, according to Slovenian prosecutor, local state prosecutor, uh, according which I think I met him the other day too, uh, according to the words of Novo Mesto police investigators and police directors that were involved in this stuff, they were determining how much the Roma people are willing to go uh, and search for the job after the job would not be offered them or mobbing, they will be presented with a mobbing at the workplace. And the years when they did all the stuff I'm talking about when it all started, it goes to 2002, which means that the brother from the Zabiak moved to this Zhikovo cello even earlier than what I, what I initially uh, 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 believed. 
2001 and 2002, the two brothers, uh, first it was the, the Met Media that they had a difficulty with his brother who was born here in this place, had a difficulty to find a job because exactly because of the issues which I have stated right now. Uh, these are the issues for which I took the responsibility for it uh, by discriminating a Roma family. Discrimination is basically based on a torture, uh, intimidation, harassment, uh, as long as you produce the statements that uh, this psychiatrist, the police used and interpreted to the Roma people, it was everything okay. Now, do I believe that this Roma people did absolutely everything possible uh, to find the job and go about life in a normal way? Absolutely, I'm not idiot. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I don't give any kind of credit to this Roma family for absolutely anything anymore. <laughs> but, well, because uh, of what I stated a little bit earlier, the more money they piled up, the more I was guilty, the more I was guilty for everything in the end, in 2018, 2019, they demanded from me even 5,000 euros extra when I was drugged up and delivered to them. Slovenian government, uh, next to the torture they engaged on me, in a bestiality, butcheries they did on me, have used this Roma family in what they have referred to us. Uh, they do also in the United States of America is known as reverse discrimination, except that I never discriminated anybody and I was born in Slovenia and I am ethnic Slovenian individual. Uh, the reverse discrimination was based so because I did not like Roma community, uh, they would be, it was presented to me, this local, uh, local, fam the local, local Roma family as the only way out of Slovenia to escape Slovenian brutality, they would provide me with a ride to the Italy. Anything you will say, it will be mafia that will go after you and kill you and so on and so forth. Yeah, this is a psychiatrist, Peter Kopš, and uh, Novo Mesto, local Novo Mesto police station. Except that it doesn't stop with Novo Mesto that was involved with this stuff. This story developed much further. This crime went on and 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 on. And it finally involved a, a local, uh, it's called uh, Pumpenza, yeah? It's called Pumpenza, this location here. Yeah, uh, for all the crime that Slovenian prosecutors, judges, psychiatrists did in respect to this Roma family, uh, Slovenian state wanted to wash from its shoulders, basically by introducing in a crime uh, a little community uh, which they have assembled over the course of the years from the people that were involved in it and that they would have them gathered here. Yeah, Slovenian police would, this is like a, it's called Five Forestereva Ulica. Uh, they would have these people uh, assemble here and this would be like a liberal, socialist, freedom-oriented people that uh, really wanted to Greater Serbia back. This, this this is really a local association of people who did absolutely everything to overthrow Slovenia, together with the Novo Mesto Police Department, with a psychiatrist bash, with 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 a fraction in Slovenia that is doing absolutely everything to bring back Greater Serbian Chetnik State, Yugoslavia. This is what this Pumpenza here is. Yeah. And these are the people that eventually, they did not have a connection, but they were part of the police association and they involved uh, a young police interventionists, uh, people that 
police officers who intervened here in this location. Yeah, this is what I told you. This is where they tortured me, intimidated me, demanded from me uh, if I would not call the police for intervention uh, and all kinds of stuff. Upon which, by, by the way, it was realized that police gave them a warning, but there's a Roma family. And if you will continue to walk through here, you're doing this at your own risk. That kind of stuff. That's basically how the police intervention ended. Uh, with police investigators, uh, with police officers, and this is this is basically this was like a staff, a support for the Novo Mesto police. These are these people here are completely indifferent from the Novo Mesto police and police. These are police and police right there. They just don't have badges. They are not just registered as a police officers, but this is a Novo Mesto police station out on a nature, basically out in an open. And everybody in the city of the Novo Mesto is scared of these people because they represent Slobodan Milosevic's terror, Karadzic. Everybody in the city of the Novo Mesto, including the police officers alone, are afraid of this place here because they present a totally different agenda to what Slovenian nation have, I don't know how to say, opredeliti, uh, chartered itself for independence in 1991. Yeah? Um, these are the people that distribute me throughout Yugoslavia, whether it be Bosnia, Croatia, uh, Bosnia, uh, Serbia mostly, mostly was Serbia, where I would be mercilessly, mercilessly tortured on God knows how many fucking occasions, beginning the 1993, probably. So I think that this stuff defines exactly about what this place here is. But what's interesting, they have a police officers, like the man, uh, mid-built, uh, in a house with his... Uh, the, the two got married. Uh, I think he married to... Uh, to her house, to the house of her parents, or whatever the case might have been. Uh, and they would literally walk through here back and forth. And uh, uh, inside of his home, they would analyze where I was also present, you know. Uh, this police officer would also have me inside of the home, and they would, with these people, uh, at this from this pumpenza where they where they gather, they would analyze everything, every fucking thing, uh, the voice of the river uh, when you walk, uh, the voice of the uh, from the houses where during the houses if it can be established as you walk from the recorder. Uh, where you are located and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the distance, uh, as I demonstrated the other day, from uh, unpaved, unasphalted road uh, up here and so on. Um, it's like this, basically. They work together, as I stated. Uh, it was a novel master police. It was Milan Kuchan, it was Borut Paho who used this Roma community here to do the dirty job, to do the dirty stuff. Uh, as my not uh, feeling guilty about any kind of Roma discrimination, because I don't have anything to do with these people, we never met in a real time, but receiving so many death threats, uh, I am going to give ultimatum to this Roma people. You will witness you will point out where exactly you have done the torture in the area of Maribor and about the stuff that you have done with the Slovenian police here uh, in the back of the village. Or we're going to go with your entire Roma uh, society in Slovenia about it. We're going to start to discuss about uh, your whereabouts in Slovenia, about your deeds in Slovenia. 
what exactly do you envision your life in Slovenia? Do you envision your life in Slovenia as a mafia, as a gangsters, uh, somebody who's going to extort, death threaten people, uh, kill locals, kill natives here? Or do you envision yourself as a productive member part of this society? I will take your testimony over the police testimony because I am not going to give the police, Slovenian police, the right to testimony of any kind. This case is heading to international tribunals. Thanks for watching this case. A Roma guy told me the other day for me not to cross his path again. I never cross anybody's path. I go, the only thing I do is I go through there. But I'm going to say to you the same thing. As I go through there, don't try to stop me. Don't get on my way. Don't try under any circumstances to cross my way. Today is September the 16th. Thanks for watching this video.